In my last video, I showed you how to model a pipe clamp, and now I want to show you how to do a T-junction. Um, I've done this before, I think, in some of my other videos, but I haven't really just focused on just that. So let's do that so we can do a bunch of pipe stuff. So shift A, mesh, cylinder. Let's go for 18 vertices and choose nothing for the cap fill. Go into edit mode and scale shift Z to make it just a little bit narrower. Okay, we are gonna go into wireframe and box select up here. So that'll get those two vertices. Shift S, cursor to select it. So my 3D cursor is right in the middle. We're also gonna to switch to 3D cursor so that my pivot point is there. Go back to front view and box select all of these on the right side, including that center one. Now we wanna bend these down using the shear tool. So I'll come down here to this thing here, shear. Grab here and pull down. And then as this menu pops open, choose one. All right, I'm gonna scroll up and choose this again, the move. Select everything and Shift D, rotate X 180 to flip it up top. And then select everything, press M. We're gonna merge by distance and look down here. We've gotten rid of some vertices. All right, deselect, I'm gonna come back to median point, the default, and I'm gonna box select all of these. All right, including that middle one. Press E to extrude and pull out. And to straighten these, press SX zero. Now box select these and these and press SZ and scale them in so you get a nice T. We're gonna put subdivision surface on this so we need some more edge loops. So control R, pull an edge loop in, just not right on top of that other edge. One up here and one from down here. We can now go back into solid view and go control two and shade smooth. Let's put on the cavity shader and shadow, switch to a matte cap that we like, and we have this so far. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more work on this now. I'm going to shift alt and click this upper edge and shift alt and click this lower edge. We're gonna press E and S, Z, scale in the Z and pull. And in the menu here, I'm gonna put in down here for the Z, it's gonna be 1.2, deselect select here shift alt and click e and then pull out and here i'm going to switch this to 0 0.2 so those are all equal press 3 for face selection shift alt and click shift alt and click shift alt and click turn so you get a good vantage point and press e and alt s and push and push it out as much as you as you want to make that part of the pipe now let's add some more edge loops control r there Let's straighten this by going SX0 and pulling that close. Let's do another one here. Let's straighten this SZ0 and pull it close. And down here, SZ0 and pull it close. Let's put some more edge loops. Control R, pull here and here, up here and down there, and this one, this and this all right so this is what we have now if we put a pipe in here this edge right here is the same uh, diameter as this part so the pipe would have to exactly fit we need to scale this in a little bit so shift alt and click that edge i'm in edge selection shift alt and click this edge and shift alt and click this edge and we can scale them all the same Switch over to individual origins and just press S and scale. And they all come in. Then let's switch back to median point. Shift Alt and click that one to deselect it and press E and S Z and push. And just push them in just a little ways. It doesn't matter how far. Probably want to add some more edge loops. So let's come up and let's come in. Let's do the same down here. We'll come in and come up okay and we're going to come over to this guy and we're going to have to pull him in a little bit so select e and just pull in a little ways doesn't matter how much again an edge loop there and an edge loop there and now let's shade smooth and now we're ready for a pipe to go in all right so i mean we've, we've done the t-junction but just to show you with a pipe coming in so let's just select a circle to use shift d pull it up break it out p separate it so now we have that alone 
Um, I may turn off the subdivision. I'll probably use that in a bit, but let's go into edit mode. And now I like to put some thread as it attaches. I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to pull that down like this. Now the polys are going to be flipped the wrong way. If I just do that and put on the subdivision and shade smooth, and my pipe comes up like that, I just find it kind of boring, but you might want to do that anyhow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it in just a little bit more. And then I'll take this edge here, an E and S, and I'll scale it out as, as wide as I want my pipe to end up being. Could be similar to this one. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to pull it up, and then I'm going to select that edge and Control B to bevel. I'm going to separate it and put one more in there. That makes it easy. And then an edge loop coming up to here. And you might want one more in there. It depends how much detail you want. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some fake thread on this by... Uh, uh, putting some edge loops. I'm going to pull it up just a little bit and control B to pull it apart, roll back to zero. So I have just the two edges, you know, along the top and the bottom and E and Alt S and I'm going to push. And I like to do that. It, it looks a little cartoony. You may have to scale it in just a little bit and then there's decide where you want it. You know, I just like that kind of join um anyways up to you about this if you want to do it or not might try one more edge loop just to give it a little bit more strength support okay my 3d cursor is still there i am going to switch back to 3d cursor and go into edit mode and shift d rotate x 180 and that should pop another one down there and shift d rotate y 90 uh rotate y minus 90 rotate y minus 90 and then we have that now they're all one one object right now so if you want to you could take this one control L P you could break it out and you can decide how far in you want it to switch back to median point at some point all right and that is what we end up you should probably do this all 10 recalculate outside just to be sure uh, and we have our T junction and we have pipes that could go off uh, in in any way that we want them to so again it's up to you if you like the thread or not I'll show you one where I don't have that and I just kind of connect it maybe like that or maybe it's got to be a little narrow so I'll go s uh, shift x and you know maybe it's like that or whatever you know I just I just like this and especially if you're texturing it and, and especially if you're doing it in substance painter it'll it'll catch um, some uh, some dirt and stuff based on the curvature so up to you how you do that but there's a T joint next time I will do a cross joint where you comes down like this and there's one on this side one on that side